today and I desire that you also feel good in your life. And my prayer is that the goodness of God shall be abundant in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I read from verse 6 to verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. I like to read that part again, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance. I'm sure when I started reading, people would talk about what is he going to ask to give and all that. No? How do you arrive at having all sufficiency in all things and having an abundance? Is it realistic that you can have all sufficiency in all things and have an abundance? Yes, because that's the word of God. And the scripture cannot be broken. You can get to the point of having all sufficiency in all things in abundance. It depends on you. Are you willing to give? Are you willing to sow? I am not asking you so. To me, you know that kind of thing. So into this ministry, so into this word, so no. Because anyway, the next verse, verse 7 says, Whoever wants to give must give not grudgingly or not because he's persuaded by someone else to do so, but as a matter of personal conviction, as he purposes in his heart. I know somebody who is listening to me. It has taken you so long, not one person actually. You have been planning to give, you have been planning to give, you keep postponing and you are postponing your day of all sufficiency in all things and in abundance. As you have the opportunity, give. And I actually would recommend give unto the work of God, but that's not the only thing that you will give unto. Give to the poor. He said, whoever gives to the poor lends to the Lord. When you lend to God, he pays you back. And God never ever pays back without the abundance attached to it. God has to pay you back. It's always a wonder. As you have the opportunity, reach out. Reach out to that person. Don't give excuses. Don't give stories. Because you want to arrive at all sufficiency in all things. Tomorrow you are begging God for one piece of bread. The day after you are begging God for a few grains of rice. The other time you are begging God for some drops of milk. All manner of things. Father, supply me. Father, give me this. Boy, go out and give. You don't have give. You know what the scripture says? Paul says he was in a place and the people who beg him to give out of their deep poverty and lack. People out of their deep poverty were begging for the opportunity to give. Even Paul said no. They said they will still give. Because they realized that their path to all sufficiency was in giving. Give to whomever has need. When we say give to the poor, you look for your brother whose child is not able to go to school and pay school fees and said you have done something fantastic. What about the person that you don't know? What about that child that is hanging around on the street who should be in school? And you see the child every day. Your conscience is pricking you. You should ask about this child. No, you won't ask. It's not my child, after all. The parents should take care. How then will you arrive at all sufficiency in all things? That you may have all sufficiency in all things. And may have an abundance. Boy, I am not sure that there is anybody who wouldn't like to get to the point of all sufficiency in all things. But I think somebody will sit down and ask, is it possible... Well, whoever is asking that question is making a mistake, terrible mistake. Why is it a mistake? Because that person would have known that everything that God says happens exactly as he says it. 
When he says there is sun, there is sun. He says there is no sun, there is no sun. In this world today, I think we have learned to understand that things work by God. The things he refuses are not happening, no matter how the scientific projections are. When God stretches out his arm, nobody understands what's going on. Learn to give. Like I said, to the work of God, to the persons around you, to the issues and troubles of society, reach out. Be the point of succor for many. The moment you start to become the one that makes life livable for some of the people who don't have any life at all, what you find is that your own life takes on a higher dimension. God promotes you. According to your level, do it. Paul said, out of their deep poverty, they begged to give to the work of God. Do it. Don't say you don't have. I, have you eaten in the last one week? That means you could have had a drop of that food to give to somebody else. We know the fable or call it parable or anything. The man who took his last meal was a banana. And on top of a tree, his intention was when he has finished eating the banana, when the thing goes down, he will jump down from there and kill himself. And he threw the peel down and saw another person pass by, pick the peel of that banana, ate and gave glory to God, thanked God for having a meal and passed by. He changed his mind about suicide. Whatever your situation is, is not so bad that you cannot help. You can. Whatever your situation is, is not so bad that you cannot give. Even to the work of God, you can. And you must. If you want to arrive at all sufficiency in all things. This one needs no prayer. It needs action. Don't pray, Lord, I will do it. No, go out and do it. All of the times that you have been dilly-dallying, postponing, thinking, oh, this, uh, it's not this month, it will be next month. After two days, do it now. N-O-W, do it. Go out and do it. Because you must arrive in all sufficiency, in all things. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.